Hi, this is Stuart Weems and welcome to the Investopoly podcast. My goal is to give you simple, easy to understand strategies, insights and tips to help you master the game of building wealth. And in this episode, what I'd like to talk about is are additional super contributions worthwhile making? So is it is it a good investment strategy? Should you be contributing more into super? So firstly, obviously, Uh, If you're an employee, your employer has to contribute 9.5% of your gross salary into super uh, as as compulsory contributions up to about $20,000 a year. That's the the maximum what they call superannuation guarantee payments. Uh, They need to make those payments uh, quarterly at 28 days after each the end of each quarter into your super fund. So that's when they need to actually hit the account. Um, so you're already putting in 9.5% of your uh, income or your salary uh, into super. And then the question is, should you be making additional contributions? So if your 9.5% is less than $25,000 a year, uh, then you can potentially make additional super contributions. So $25,000 a year is the what they call maximum concessional super contribution cap. So that's the most that you can put into super and claim a tax deduction for. So if you're on $100,000, then your employer has to put in $9,500, which means that uh, you can potentially contribute up to an extra $15,500 per annum, uh, and uh, which brings your total contributions to the $25,000 cap. You can make those contributions either periodically throughout the year through a salary deduction, or you can make them uh, uh, via a lump sum payment using your own personal cash flow or personal savings, and then claim a tax deduction uh, when you lodge your your tax return. So you've got a bit of flexibility about when and how you do this. So you don't necessarily need to, at the beginning of a financial year like this, sit down and work out, okay, I want to put in an extra $50 per pay into super. So the first comment in terms of is it worthwhile is that we need to appreciate the power of starting early. And let me give you uh, two examples, Susie and Matt. So Susie is 30 years old. Uh, She earns $100,000 a year. uh, And so she's already contributing uh, $9,500 through her employer compulsory contributions. Now, if Susie contributes an extra 3.5% of her gross salary, so an extra $3,500 a year or $67 per week, by age 60, remember Susie's only 30, so in th- by 30 years' time, she will have a 32% higher balance. So uh, really 960000 versus uh, $1.27 million. So it's quite a big reward for a relatively small sacrifice so $67 a week, extra contribution starting age 30. Compare this to Matt. If Matt's 50 years old um, and uh, he maxes out his contributions uh, at this stage for the next 10 years, so between age 50 and age 60, uh, which means that Matt contributes an extra fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, his balance is only 13% higher by the time he gets to age 60. And the reason for that is that we get rewarded for that compounding capital growth, that is starting additional contributions sooner rather than later. So I guess the point of these examples is don't leave super too late. You know, if if you wait until you're 50 to start concentra- concentrating on super and making additional contributions into super, you can't make up for lost time. You know, you can't make up for that lost ability to compound capital growth. So uh, having said that, is it the right strategy to do? Well, it's it's going to depend on your your cash flow and uh, your other assets, other assets you know outside super, non super assets. So look, if you if you've already acquired um, some non super assets like maybe a one or two investment properties, you know you're contributing to a share portfolio, uh, you don't have a, a significant uh, non deductible debt like home loan, then arguably, uh, and if your cash flow allows it so that you can continue investing outside super but also make small contributions into super, then it, it's probably a very, very good strategy. It's kind of for savings, you know. Your employer will contribute it through salary sacrifice so you won't even see it and you probably won't even feel it after a, a bit of time, but it will, it will add up. But if you don't have much in the way of assets outside super, or you have a large non-deductible debt, or your cash flow is pretty tight, and you're still 
quite young, then arguably you, your order of priority, there, there's other priorities that you need to focus on, like building your asset base outside super or debt reduction and so forth. So there's no one size fits all in terms of an answer should you make additional super contributions. It really does depend on those things, cash flow, other investment assets and debt exposure. Some people are worried about making additional super contributions because um, they're conscious that the government keeps playing with the rules and uh, they don't necessarily want to tie all their money up in super and then um, hand control over the government. That is, the government can decide when they can and cannot retire and when they can and cannot access super monies. Um, so I, uh, I appreciate it. I understand the reluctance to uh, focus on super or really... Um, a lot of people attempted in, to ignoring super in totality. Well, um, I, I, can, I completely understand, but all I would say is all I counsel you is don't ignore it in totality. Um, super is always going to be concessionally taxed. There's always going to be tax and cash flow and earnings um, benefits of or attractions in, in contributing to super. Um, you're already putting 9.5% of your income in. So maybe just topping that up to sort of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15% of your income um, probably won't hurt you too much from a cash flow perspective, probably won't hurt you too much um, uh, from a borrowing capacity perspective. In fact, um, discretionary super contributions, uh, lenders will typically add that back because they are in fact discretionary. You could stop them at any time. So it's not going to impact your borrowing capacity and it's probably going to have very little impact on your cash flow and your ability to invest elsewhere. So uh, don't ignore it. Um, the, the benefits are too significant to ignore in totality, but certainly don't be too super centric uh, either. Uh, that is that you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket and, and only have superannuation. You want to spread your wealth across a couple of different ownership structures, in my opinion. Um, what else can you do to boost your super? Well, well, as the rules stand at the moment, uh, you can borrow to invest inside your super. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of it. I mean, it's right for the right clients and the right stage of life and so forth. Um, but uh, obviously, it's possible to go out, go out and buy an investment property and borrow up to 70% of the purchase price. It's becoming a lot harder to do that these days with tighter credit policies. And um, there's, there's more pressure from the government to uh, actually um, get rid of the ability for super funds to be able to borrow. And, and there's a lot of talk in the marketplace about whether that's going to happen. Um, so maybe that opportunity might not be around for a long period of time, but that's another strategy. Um, but of course, uh, you've got to look at your investment strategy in a, on a holistic basis. Don't really develop a super strategy in isolation. What you really need to do is develop a, a longer term investment strategy of which a part of that's going to be your super strategy. Um, and so, you know, instead of thinking, what can I do to boost my super, you should be thinking about what can I do to boost my overall wealth, and superannuation is a component of that. So I'm sorry that I couldn't give you an absolutely definitive rule of thumb of whether you should make additional super contributions or not. Or not. Unfortunately, the answer is a little bit more complex than that, and it's really just about considering the things that I've discussed in this podcast. And like always, uh, if you're after further information and links and so forth, check out the show notes. Uh, otherwise, until next week... Bye for now.